Dream RJ here. Just thought I would do my next video a tutorial uh, about explaining props, uh, statics, uh, dynamics, overrides, and physics. I'll try and make this as re as quick as possible. So we just open up the tutorial map. Uh, I've already put some bits in place. So, to, so to, as to make this this tutorial a bit faster and quicker and not as big, not as long. So, basically, a, a static is so. So you go to Create Entity Tool, and you go and type in static, and then you get a static. So then, just I just put it onto the floor like so, and then click the arrow and press the X X key on the keyboard so you get the the white boxes around. Double click it, and you can see you've got World Model. Double click World Model, and we want a static model, so we'll just do a frame. Okay, that's a static model. So we'll just use this for the sake of it. So this, as you can see, if you go to the info tab, you've got three little things here that says physics, dynamic, and static. This basically indicates to to you what what this model, what this particular model can be uh, used as in the compiling in the game so this can actually be used as a static or a dynamic so basically it because it because it's it will just do it as a static so now we just oh no I didn't double click <laughs> so double click it and then apply so as you can see it's it's in the world but it's just under the floor a little bit so let's just put it pull it up a bit so we can see so as you can see that is now in the game so we've got a model in the game Okay, so say you want to create a dynamic, so you go back to the entity tool, type in dynamic, and put it into the world again, click the arrow, go to the world model, as you can see the dynamic, and now we need to have an animating one, so what we'll do is we'll type in arm, and if you go to if you look at that again this is this is an animated oh no this that one's not okay this one's an animated model so we'll use this one so as you can see there's loads of different animations so as you can see it's animated if you click the animations in the sequences tab you can see what the animations are so we'll just so as you can see this has to be a dynamic because it's an animated model you can also put this as a dynamic override but there's no need to for this particular for these particular models uh, so we'll just double click and put this into the game like so so as you can see this is a real big model so it, it takes up a lot of space we'll just put it into position properly so it doesn't there we go okay yeah, so that's going to be right up against the ceiling and up against the floor because it's such a huge model. But it's it's only for demonstration purposes anyway. So that's a dynamic a dynamic. So override. Basically, you've got three different types of overrides: a physics override, a dynamic, and a static override. And basically, what they do is they f they they force the game to put a certain model into the game uh, as a, as an override so so a model that doesn't so say you go back to this a minute so say this static or physics isn't ticked say for example you wanted a static model to be a physics override uh, or a static override or you it, it, it just it just forces basically the override is, is basically what it says in the name it just forces forces uh, models to, to, to be put into the game and it gives you a few extra options in the properties menu so that's the only difference really in overrides but they can be very useful in, in certain circumstances uh, when you're having problems with certain models because some models are very buggy and some of them are a bit pain to, to get per, to, you know to work in the game and stuff so you just got to watch out for them so that's basically uh, them uh, physics. So let's just quickly do the physics. So the physics. So yeah, the, the I'll just quickly show you. I, I put this radio in, and I made this a physics override. 
because it's a radio and we need it to be picked up because you know it's normal for the, the for the radio to be picked up so you need this to be a physics override and if, if you double click it again you see that it doesn't have these two ticked so this is a prime a good example of, sh of, of explaining why you need to use physics override in certain circumstances so you can at least pick 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 models up in the game so that's basically what you do so you're just selecting the model and point it as a physics override and that's that so now I'll just quickly explain funk fizz box funk fizz boxes are basically a way for you to make your own brushes like I've made this brush here uh, as you can see it's just a, a, a quick panel and then basically you make a brush texture it and then you just press ctrl T to tie it to an entity so I just quickly show you again so you go to the create a tool brush and then you just basically making a brush like so and then you go to browse click on this create like so and then as you can see the texture isn't aligned but obviously you can texture it whichever you want to texture it and then just go to fit and as you can see that's just perfectly fitted the texture on all of the sides as you can if you go underneath you can see it's textured underneath and and whatnot so as you can see the edges are a bit crazy so what we'll do is we'll just select the edges like this And then the last one over here and then we need this 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 texture here for the edges so it's metal let's just type in dirty that's the one hey, that's another thing I hate about this model viewer it's a pain so as you can see it's just applied it uh, treat as one and then just press fit and as you can see it, it puts that 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 frame that that border texture the, the the metal texture so that's basically how you do the how you do that so now you can see you've got just got a brush it's got no entity or nothing so basically what you need to do is you need to click, click it press ctrl t on the keyboard like i mentioned before and then you need to change it to a funk fizz box so if you just type ph you'll see it pop up so just type fizz box click that and apply and you can give it a name if you want to but it's not necessary unless you you know you're doing some more complex hammer stuff and you need to give it a name uh, so basically it's metal so we need to change this material type to metal and then we need to give it a strength so we'll give it 200 like so and that's pretty much all really you need to do with that because you've already got generate output on use okay there is a lot of more flags that you can that you can mess about with it's just you can just have fun and experiment and see what these different flags do for you in the game and, and whatnot so basically what you then need to do is you need to give you need to create a trigger so you can actually break these objects so remember the strength is 200 so basically you need to create a trigger here so to do that you just quickly create a trigger in, like I did in previous uh, things so you're just creating a brush and then just texturing it with the trigger a uh, material texture and then you press ctrl T on the keyboard and that will tie it to an entity so then you can make it a trigger underscore hurt and then once you've got it as a trigger hurt you, you know obviously we know what the damage is on these it's 200 so we need to put the strength on this as 200 so then it can just it can just break and do things okay so if we keep it generic that'll just that's just generic then uh, so then what else is very important with the trigger hurt is we need to go to the flags tab and click pushables physics objects physics debris and that isn't really necessary but it's good just to tick it anyway because it's it's usually ticked by default so just keep that ticked unless you don't need it so you want to tick it 
and then just just click apply uh, but then what you need to also do is go back to the go to the outputs and as you can see I've already added this so you just do on start touch so you go to so you go to add so you say add on start touch and you need to type in excla explana explanation mark <coughs> Uh, our explanation point, whatever you, however you name it. <laughs> Activator. Oh, hang on. Activator. Exp was it explanation mark? It was, I'm sure. Yeah. Activator. That's it. <laughs> I'm losing my head a minute. So, activator. And we want, and then you need to do an input. So we want it to break. So we want these to break. So you get a break animation in the game. And you just click apply. So let's delete this one. So that's basically that. So you're now telling the hurt to break any object that touch this trigger hurt and fall into it or, or, or drop into it. So apply. And that's pretty much that. That's really all there is to the the dynamics and statics and fizz boxes and physics and whatnot. Uh, so I just quickly won the map so you, so I can just quickly show you in the game what it looks like. Just having a drink, sorry about that. So as you can see, we're now in the game. So if we go in, you'll see that the, the, the props are there and the radio. This model isn't actually solid. Oh, as you can see, I've just moved it and it broke. Because I, 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 I must have pushed it into the trigger. So we'll just pick the radio up and we'll drop it into the trigger here. And you'll see it just disappear. See how it disappears? That's because the radio model didn't have any any damage uh, animation, any break damage animation. So watch what happens when I drop this panel in; it'll just break and shatter into pieces, as you can see. And you get a noise, a break noise. So that's basically how you do how you do them. So yeah, so you can have fun experimenting with with these little things in game and do and make make things how you want it and make it really cool and make cool effects so have fun and thanks for watching and please subscribe and share and like and comment and bye for now until the next time <laughs>